Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be. Today, we are gonna be talking about the must-have lenses for the Sony E-mount full-frame system. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. That's right, everybody. Welcome back to another video. Hopefully you're having a great day, and today we're gonna to be talking about the must-have lenses for the Sony full frame E-mount. Now, if you haven't already, subscribe, leave a like and comment down below about what videos you wanna see next. And also, I have already done reviews about the Sony 85mm 1.8 and about the Sony 16-35 to 2.8 G Master, so I'll link those in the cards here up above. So make sure to check those out. So we're not gonna be talking about those lenses today, but those are essential in my opinion. I've also done a review about the Sony 24 to 105 F4. So check that out. I'll leave that up in the cards somewhere as well. So there's two more lenses which are remaining in my camera bag or in my photography setup and that is this little nifty little lens that came out a couple of years ago and this is the let me just take the lens hood off that is the sony g master 24 mil f 1.4 now this is an incredible little lens it's light it's small and it has uses beyond your wildest imagination. Let's look at the physical aspects of the lens. So as you expect from most G Master lens, you have a little switch there which you can program in camera to whatever you want. It has an AF manual focus switch here as well. But the other cool thing, apart from the focus ring, is it's got an aperture ring. And you can see here, the aperture goes from automatic to 1.4 to f16 and it is clicky however if you're into filmmaking and you don't want those clicks being recorded you can switch off the clicks over here and go to a smooth aperture transition now what do I use this lens for? Well, a number of things. The main one is astrophotography, and I'll put up a couple of photos of that right now, but also for landscapes. I love this for landscapes and for vlogging. Now, some people say that 24 is too shallow of a focal length for vlogging, but you know what? Once you put the camera onto a tripod or a gorilla pod at arm's length, 24 is plenty for that. So I highly recommend this 24 1.4 G Master from Sony. The other lens we're gonna talk about is this bad boy. Now, this is the Sony 70 to 200 F4. As you can see, it's got a number of features here and I absolutely love this lens. And this I use mainly for portraits and for landscapes and for just items that I can't get enough reach with the 24 to 105. The extra 105 to 200 here range gives me enough to capture what I need. Now, there's a couple of great things about this lens. Number one, it's got three custom set buttons on the lens so you can program these to whatever you want them to be it's got a plethora of buttons over here now these include autofocus to manual focus help for the focus so whether you're on the full focus range or from three meters to infinity so it just doesn't hunt that much it has optical steady shot which you need at 200 mils and it's a beast of a lens now this comes with a 72 millimeter filter thread and you know what there is an f 2.8 version g master but that version is hellway much more expensive 
I got this used for a bargain and sometimes with these kind of lenses you may want to go used because you'll get a good deal from it. But this has never let me down. It is sharp. I've gotten a reach for it. Yes, Tamron have recently released their telephoto zoom lens but that brand new is pretty much the same as I got this used and I just kind of have that trust in Sony lenses with Sony cameras. Eye autofocus works great, face autofocus works great and this lens has never let me down. Like I said, with this being an f4 and not the 2.8 version like the G Master or like the Tamron, you are going to suffer a little bit in low light. But remember, these cameras like the Sony a7 III, a7 S3, the new A1, the A9, or any alpha camera for that matter, they perform pretty, pretty well in lower light. So you can always crank that ISO up a little bit. I've never had a problem using this. Indoors, you may want to use some kind of a light or a flash. Outdoors, again, once it starts getting dark, you're gonna to have to crank that ice up, but during the daytime, you will have no issue with this lens. So these are the other two additions. So like I said, the Sony 24 1.4, the Sony 70 to 200 F4. These are the other two lenses that go together with my other lens specified. Leave down in the comments what lens you have and which is your favorite lens, and I'll be sure to check it out. But in the meantime, thank you very much for watching. Goodbye for now.